Hello and welcome to Teaching Python. This is episode 114. And today we're going to be talking about EduBlocks again with Josh Lowe. And if you haven't met Josh, you're going to get a great uh, refresher on what he's been up to. Um, we actually spoke with Josh 100 episodes again, ago. So stay tuned for more about what Josh has been up to and the EduBlocks experience. My name is Sean Tiber. I am a coder that teaches. And my name is Kelly Schuster Perez, and I'm a teacher that codes. So welcome, Josh, to the show again. Um, it's great to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, we, we had to go back and look it up. You were on episode 13 with us, so way back in the beginning when we got started. And I think for years after that, we've talked about how great it was to have you on the show and talked about the project that you're working on and you know how amazing EduBlocks is and, and what a remarkable developer you are. Um, and so it's really wonderful to have you back and, and get the opportunity to catch up with where you are and what you've been working on lately. Yeah, lots, lots going on. So perfect time to do it. Um, yeah, lots to talk about. I was, I was just saying at the beginning of the show, I was giddy and very goofy and laughing and like, oh, my God, this kid is like amazing. I just want to like have him in my class. And I'm so excited to have you back. So I was no, trying to me trying to hide my excitement talking to you backstage but <laughs> i'm just gonna be giddy again you can listen to the first five minutes of the of the past show and just see how nerdy i was back then the teacher's delight to have such a an amazing well now he's an adult so i can't call him a young kid anymore but now he's an i old appreciate man. it anyway <laughs> Excellent. Well, why don't we get started with the wins of the week um, before we get into uh, catching up? Josh, why don't you go first? If there's anything you'd like to share, something great that's happened inside or outside of the classroom, office, keyboard, wherever it's happening, uh, we'd love to hear about it. Sure. So um, I'm not going to spoil what it is because we'll, we'll come on to that. But um, the next big feature in Azure Box uh, this week, which was unexpected, I didn't expect it to happen this week. I kind of like got all the individual pieces done for this feature to kind of work. So all that I need to do now is kind of put them all together and hope that they work. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was kind of a win to have everything all kind of working on their own and then I can put it together and um, release that feature. So yeah, um, making good progress with that. Isn't it great when it all starts to fit together? You know, like all exactly. the pieces are starting to click. It's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Just All to right, be well, able to focus on it. I'm not even talking more. I'm trying to wait till later when you bring yeah. up the feature. <laughs> now I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm ready for more. So <laughs> no, no spoilers yet. <laughs> yeah, right. no spoilers. Sean, you go. Okay. Um, let's see here. So my win this week has been uh, a lot of great progress at work with our platform. Uh, we've been setting up a whole um, AWS cloud platform environment. And we're getting towards the end of a summer internship at the same time. So a lot of things are happening in the last week. Interns are gearing up for their final presentations. They're getting their final deliverables together from their sum summer projects. Um, so like that's exciting just from a, you know, kind of a teacher, you know, professional growth and development uh, perspective. But then uh, on the other side, we've been shipping a lot of new great code bringing on a lot more applications and workloads onto our platform. And it's been just sort of the same thing, Josh, that really satisfying feeling of everything starting to fall into place uh, that you've been working at for so long. So my win has really just been seeing it all come together over the last couple of weeks between interns and, and the platform and everything. And I, I don't know how much I'm supposed to share about the details of the platform, but a lot of really big projects are starting to um, use our platform and I'm starting to see a lot of those activity measures, um, you know, run along. And, and it was like kind of that cool moment where I was looking at our cost data and saw this huge spike in network costs. And I realized that it was because someone was transferring a huge amount of data onto and through our platform. And it was really satisfying to see it actually happening. So it was pretty, pretty cool to see. You're just a nerd and you just like seeing graphs and bings and bops. Face it. I am in good company <laughs> on this podcast. I will have you know. You are. You love the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I'm got two more weeks of I'm I'm not doing anything related to work and coding. Sorry, guys. Um, so it's two more weeks before I go back, and we have, actually next week I start uh, with our pre planning for our pre planning. Um, so this week, my wins. I think I'm going to put on my LinkedIn account as like project manager or social media expert because I've lined up some really good guests coming up 
And it's been a great summer of just getting back into the podcast after Sean and we had our hiatus. Um, we made a, we made a vow to, uh, get to work this summer and he's been, he's been, uh, doing it well and keeping, keeping the recording. So we, we've hit and hitting like 370 followers on LinkedIn, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and just some really good people that I've talked to that might be coming on the show. I really like have been digging into who's been using Python and it seems like everybody now is even more so using Python, Netflix, Instagram. I know they always did it in the past, but I'm starting to see things like um, green technology and using Python to reduce uh, the carbon footprint, a lot of stuff in the UK with that. So I don't know, just been learning a lot with that. And that's my new role. I think I'm just going to put it on my skills on LinkedIn, social media expert. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I challenged you last night to to swing for the fences on uh, booking <laughs> guests. Like, just throw it out there and see who says yes. And, yes, I threw it out there this morning. <laughs> you've already been doing that, so it's great. <laughs> we'll see what happens. See what I catch. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Well, let's let's jump right in because I am super excited to talk about EduBlox and talk with you, Josh, about what you've been up to. Um, you know, it has been there's been a lot that's happened since the last time we talked uh, nearly four years ago or maybe even almost closer to five now. Um, but, you know, we've had we've had a global pandemic. Um, there's been all sorts of celebrities that have, that have gotten into and out of trouble. Um, there's been elections and government overthrows, all sorts of things. And, and Josh graduated. And and Josh graduated, <laughs> right? So all this is happening in the background. What's been going on with you? What have you been up to since the last time we talked? I think the last time we talked, you were 15 years old. You're now working as a, a fully fledged software developer. Yeah. So last time I was here, I was still in school. I planned on doing my exams, which didn't end up happening because COVID, I guess. Um, and that kind of like really, I think that was like the the tipping point of kind of like, you know, I, I've I, I was well, I, I don't want to use thrown out of school, but it did feel that way. You know, it kind of like one day in March saying, "Oh, you don't go to school anymore. Uh, you're kind of done with school now. You don't do your exams." And that kind of really for me was a tipping point of like. You know, I got to decide what I want to do next. Um, you know, my plan was to like go on to the next stage of education, college here in the UK. Well, that's a bit different in the US. College means something else, but um, you know, that was what I was going to do. I, I'd apply and everything. Um, but then I found out that I could do an apprenticeship, which was essentially like being able to do a full-time developer job, but have like education on the side and get like a qualification. Um, so I found a local company to do that. Um, and that's what I ended up doing. And, you know, Edgebox was the thing going on in the side. Um, at that point, you know, there was a few users, a few schools that used it into teachers that kind of develop in the platform and like I always had been, but it was all this like side hobby, I guess. Um, and yeah, it, it was kind of just something that I pursued in my spare time. Uh, so I, yeah, I got this job. I did my apprenticeship, did that full time for a few years. Um, and that was kind of like my entry into the next phase of my life, I guess, um, of, you know, being able to do my dream job of being a software developer. Um, so that's that's what I did. Um, and Edubox, you know, in those years where I did the full time job after my apprenticeship, you know, it had gone on to something that I couldn't have even believed possible when I started it. And just to give a bit of context, you know, I started Edublocks as a, a Saturday afternoon project um, and kind of just thought, oh, well, I'll make this thing. This seems like a good idea. I'll put it out and never touch it again. Um, I wouldn't have believed you if I said I'd still be working on it seven years later because that definitely wasn't the plan. But, um, you know, it, it gained in popularity. People really liked the concept. And it's been through many different developments and phases since then. Um, and I think what really, um, I can't quite remember the last time if it was kind of at this state, but supporting Python on the web um, and supporting Edublox as like a browser application uh, kind of really boosted its popularity because it didn't require anyone to install anything. You could just load up the, the browser and go. Um, so yeah, you know, I continued it in my spare time and it sort of got to the point where 
it was probably the full-time job of a few people rather than just me. And this was something I was just doing, you know, in my evenings and weekends. Um, and then, you know, last, um, last year, at the end of last year, I was approached by Anaconda, who is a company I've known for years through, like being in the Python community, going to PyCons, all that sort of thing. Um, and they were interested in acquiring it. Uh, because, you know, Anaconda is in the Python world, all about kind of upskilling people um, with, with Python skills. Um, and for them, you know, Edubox was a, a natural fit to kind of cater for that K through 12, um, you know, education market, uh, trying to upskill people with Python skills at a younger age. Um, and yeah, here we are. So now they own Edubox. I work on it full time with some amazing people um, and it's going from strength to strength. Um, you know, there's lots of new features in the works, lots of new features just been released um, and really excited for the future um, because, you know, I can dedicate a lot more time to it, a lot more resources and we can really kind of build something that helps teachers all around the world, uh, which is really exciting. Don't lie, you were seriously doing like a happy dance in the background when Anaconda approached you. You were just like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. I'll admit, um, you know, it was a it's an amazing opportunity, right, to be able to turn your hobby into a into a job, uh, but also get to work with some really talented people in the Python community every day. Um, you know, for me, it's all about you know what what can I learn from others, and that's a really good opportunity as well. Uh, you know, there's lots of exciting things going on at Anaconda that can benefit Edublox, uh, such as PyScript, what we're going to come on to, I'm sure. Um, and lots of things that Edublox can benefit Anaconda as well. So it's you know, it's kind of a, a really good partnership that is going to allow us to do some really cool things and is already letting us do really cool things. That's awesome. And to give context, sorry, I'm going to take Sean's. She's going to probably summarize it. To give context, what, what Edublox is and was was when we first met you it was a browser base for us and we we showed it in class and it's great it's a block programming you want to explain it better for for us josh <laughs> sure, like... yeah i should have started with that <laughs> no that's good um, so yeah edgy blocks is well it's so think of scratch but for text-based coding so the idea is you have the scratch blocks and the scratch sort of like looking environment where you can drag and drop the blocks to build code but instead of the blocks having like when green flag clicked or move 10 steps, say hello world, something like that, it's actually the blocks actually represent Python code. So one block is equal to one line of Python code. So it's all about providing a friendly and familiar environment, uh, but for learning text-based coding, because um, in the talk that I did at EuroPython, I kind of explained that it's quite a big jump from Scratch, which is this visual um, sort of fun thing to do. And then you get thrown into a, a blank text prompt um, when you load up Python. So it's all about providing that middle stepping stone in between um, the visual block-based environment, but teaching the concepts that Scratch doesn't teach of text-based coding. So it's all about bridging the gap between the two. Um, but you don't have to start with Scratch. I think that's also an important thing. Yeah, because blocks are great for anyone who just wants to learn about coding. Um, so essentially, it's just a really fun and easy way to learn text-based programming is probably my one-line summary of it. Yeah, and actually, I think having taught a lot of um, people to code, you know, some with edgy blocks and some without it, um, one of the things that I, I've grown to appreciate is the way that the visual metaphor helps teach concepts in a way that is sometimes difficult to do with text. It's everything from the way that we include uh, co nested code blocks within things like for loops or conditional statements. It's sometimes hard for people to understand that the indentation means something in Python, right? But when you have a uh, the visual block there, that shows, okay, here's the start and the end of the for loop and the blocks that are nested inside that are part of that, that loop. People get that very quickly. It's an easy concept for them to grasp because they can see that the way the, the block links 
all of that together and, and encapsulates it. So for me, being able to show people sometimes with edgy blocks is a much easier way of helping to convey the concept than text-based coding has been. And so we can flip back and forth between block-based and text-based coding very easily, particularly with edgy blocks, because it does turn every block into one line of code. So I can see exactly what kind of code gets created from the blocks that I use. And it's so good that this is the way that I'm teaching my own children how to code because they can see it that way and they can go back and forth between the the visual representation and the text representation. Yeah, and I think it's all about, you know, trying to lower that barrier to entry into text-based coding. So it's, yeah, it's about focusing on the concepts rather than how do I type the code? Um, and I think that's really important, being able to relate to, um, you know, like the, the blocks in Scratch that you might be familiar with or just being able to see, like you've just said, where a for loop ends and where it starts. Uh, that's kind of like the concept um, of just providing that really easy um, sort of entry point into Python text-based programming in general. Yeah, and I... I... And I loved it back then, but it's gone through so many changes now that I just love it even better. And it's that concept, every time someone opens up, and I'll back it up a little bit, every time someone opens up a, a block base like Scratch and they flip and they're like, oh, well, you can see the JavaScript code or whatever, it just doesn't look, you you couldn't read it back and forth. And I, everyone would say, can you help me with this? And I was, I was like, I don't know block coding. I can't, I can't. It doesn't make sense. But with EduBlocks, maybe a little spoiler because you know I know a little bit about Python, but it's nice because you know the flow. You can see it writing out right next. You don't have to flip or toggle between um, block and writing. It's just side by side, and it, it's quite nice. And selfish me is thinking to myself, wow, I, you know, if only our lower school could start <laughs> using using this then i wouldn't have to teach a basic sixth grade python course anymore i can start doing really 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 cool stuff in sixth seventh and eighth and go up there so it is so accessible for the younger kids um for sure eight seven start plugging in so that's pretty cool And just like adding, you want to tell us about the features in there? Because I know it has Microbit. I know it had Turtle. And you've added a lot more other things that, you know, are in there that it can can uh, work with. Yeah. So um, you know, it's all about kind of um, making it sort of like fun and engaging. So like you can you can teach Python in a very boring way. Um and that can put people off, I suppose. Um, but there are some ways to do it, which EduBlox tries to focus on. So using things like Turtle to be able to visualize the Python code. Uh, and the great thing about Turtle is it, it's very quick to get something that is um, that looks really complicated or um, you know, is, looks really fun if you're doing like artwork and things like that. Um, and it's just a really easy way to do that. So. You know, that, that's definitely the most popular sort of use case using Turtle uh, as kind of like a, an introduction to Python. Um, and like you said, there's things like the micro bit. So, you know, if you want to do physical computing and, um, you know, be able, being able to use sensors like temperature sensors, uh, light sensors, all that sort of thing, uh, that provides like an easy way into um, doing that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's it's all about kind of, you know, making it fun to learn Python as well. And um, one of the new features that we've just released is extensions, which is going to allow third parties to integrate with EduBlox. So um, one of the examples is machine learning for kids, which is a quite a big platform over here in the UK, and it's starting to make its way over into the US. And it's essentially a really easy to use tool to allow you to build machine learning models. Um, so like recognizing text, images, sounds all that sort of stuff and then once you built your machine learning model um you can use it with scratch python and also edge blocks now via the extension um so you know machine learning ai it's a really relevant topic so you know that's kind of incorporating uh, some of that into into it as well and the extensions capability is going to you know open up a lot more possibilities like that one um, for third parties to kind of build their stuff in um, and integrate. And all you need is the Python library. 
that runs in the browser. So, um, yeah, lots of fun things opening up with that. Um, but yeah. there's a lot in there already. That's awesome. Is that the machine learning for kids with Dale? Yes. Is, so that's yeah. awesome. We had an episode on that. We'll repost that oh, as well. That's awesome because they did a, there's a lot of really good learning tools in there. They, you know, building out your, your, your product for training and everything. And with AI coming into play, uh, how great is it just to be able to do that with blocks as well? Pretty cool. I see in here HTML too. Yeah. <laughs> so HTML was an addition. Um, I think it was last year. Um, and that's kind of just, again, applying the, the, the block concept of mapping one-to-one -one with a line of code but now with hml um and you know that's another very relevant kind of um area of programming being able to build your own website um, a lot of schools teach it so you know it's not just python that edge of can be used for even though that is the main use case um and will remain just because of you know how important it is to learn python and how widely used it is within education but it's kind of just opening it up to, to more things. So, yeah, that's another really fun one um, because, again, HTML is, is quite easy to use once you know how to use it. So providing the blocks provides, you know, a, a, a playground to be able to, to build your own websites. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was a really fun addition that we had. It's, I'm reading it, and I was just like, wow, I'm trying to think, get my head wrapped around the HTML because just doing with the um, data visualization course that I just did, how I could have cheated a little bit with, I, I guess not really cheated, but been a little bit, you know, added help with the little block. Um, and then classrooms, that's a new one too. I saw that came out recently too, where the educators can kind of have a class assignment. Is that what I'm, what I think it is? Yeah, so Classrooms essentially allows teachers uh, to add their students to a group and then set assignments. So the idea is that if you have a, a task that you want to do in, in a classroom, um, like a, a physical classroom, you can uh, say, like, I want um, lesson one uh, to be in my module uh and kind of give a description of, of what you want the students to do. And then you can set some starter code, which is essentially code that loads up when the students open the assignment. So it's all about providing teachers a, a tool to easily collect in student work and also mark it as well. So um, they can, uh, once a, a, a student has submitted their work to the assignment, they can go in and give feedback to the student and, you know, the, the student can then read that feedback uh, and, and kind of see how they can improve. Um, so yeah, it's all about just providing an easy tool to to use EduBlox in the classroom. Very cool. Sean, Sean's making me laugh with your, uh, I guess that's your fan club. I won't tell him that my family's a Chelsea fan, fans. Oh, <laughs> Personal in Chelsea. Look out. I'm getting a lot of booze. Please don't hate us. I don't, I, you know, it's not me. It's uh, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> he, they were born in Chelsea Hospital. It's only by default, not because of anything else. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, and Sean, you want to? I didn't want to um, hoard the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I um, well, yeah, I wanted to to learn more about the curriculum work too, um, because I know that that's the other half of this equation is not just the tool and the platform to help teachers, but also how do they best leverage what the platform can do for their students. So I was curious about, you know, where that uh, work is coming from and how, how teachers can use that. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, you can create software, but it's no use without that supporting material. Um, so yeah, the curriculum is, uh, another development that has happened since I was last on. Um, and what that is all about is um, it provides six lessons, which are uh, kind of a journey of introducing Python. So um, you're learning it through Turtle, which we've just mentioned. Um, so you're learning the core concepts like variables, functions, data types, um, all those sort of things that are you know, really core to learning Python but in a fun way with Turtle. So um, yeah, it, it provides six lessons which teachers can use. Uh, it has like slideshows 
um, lesson plans. Um, it's mainly focused around the UK curriculum, um, but it can be used anywhere. But that's just what it was based around. And then at the end, there's like an assessment that students can do, like an exam. Um, and you can kind of, teachers can assess like how how the students have done in the past six lessons. So yeah, that's a, like a free sort of way to get into um, teaching Python by just simply downloading some lessons that are already pre-done. Uh, and curriculum is something that uh, since joining Anaconda, we're very focused on. Uh, so kind of like providing materials and improving the offerings around that. Um, so a lot more to come on that front um, because we know how important providing that material is uh, as well as the software. 100%. And I can imagine, because um, I remember faintly um, when we last talked, you had some teachers that were, that are you had had as instructors or something and they were supporting the edu blocks. And the thought was that, you know, there's not many, computer science teachers really out there and those that we do have leave and go to um uh, Mondelez no I'm just kidding <laughs> okay all right <laughs> no I'm just kidding um but it is it is a difficult thing and then just be able to provide um some support for educators out there it's kind of great have you have you heard um of any other schools or are they contacting you or are they like word of mouth getting out there for the new school year? What's in the plans? I mean, it's helping a lot of educators get ready. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I talk to educators a lot, um, you know, both in the UK and the U S um, which is like the two main countries. Um, and that's really important for me because, it allows me to know what I need to focus on. Uh, like I can sort of have an idea myself of what I think should be added to the platform, but you know, these are the people who are using it day to day. Um, so I, everything that I try and do and you know, kind of like wider Anaconda team, because it is a team now, um, you know, we're very much like trying to talk to educators to find out what, what they want. Uh, and that's going to be, and always will be the main driving force behind the product. Um, so yeah, I talk to educators a lot of, of how you know it's helping their students, and with the new release that uh, that we've just done, um, you know, there's there's a few kind of teachers that I can think of that you know I, I work with closely to develop the classroom feature, for example. Um, and again, that was just all about making teachers' lives easier because teachers are very busy people. Um, so what can I do to try and make that easier? And, you know, on the last podcast, I'm sure you've just mentioned um, and what I think you mentioned is I talked about like teacher training and the lack of that here in the UK. Um, unfortunately, we're four years on and it's not really got much better. Um, and yeah, so my work is very much focused and, you know, the Anaconda team's work is focused on how can we make the lives of teachers easier uh, through providing stuff like uh, the curriculum and stuff that we want to work on next in terms of learning resources. Um, and that's why the curriculum is kind of like a full set rather than just like, here's some projects. It's like, here's the lesson plans, here's the slideshow, so you can just go and deliver it. Um, obviously with a few tweaks because, you know, every um, class is different, uh, but that's sort of the idea behind that. Um, so yeah, talking to educators a lot is something that I do. Can you get it, can you get it to grade for me eventually? Like if we can just dump it in and, and you know, and it's like peer feedback autumn, and turn it in, which is like a, a word grading here. I'm giving you all kinds of ideas, Joss. Every, every, every teacher's dream. Grade it and dump it into, export it into our grade book. <laughs> yeah, no. grade, grading is something that, especially with a classroom tool, we want to look at. Um, yeah, it's, it's an obvious one, right? Yeah. Um, of if you set an assignment um, and why can't I as a teacher say, this is what I expect and go and mark it. So yeah, it's a very obvious feature that I'm sure will come at some point. And just to mention whilst we're kind of on that topic, Edubox kind of has like a public feedback board where um, students, teachers can submit ideas and um, can upvote the, the ideas on that board. And that's kind of like how we pick what to work on next. Um, and from what I remember, something like that is very high up on the list. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely something that, that I'm thinking about a lot. 
That's awesome. Josh, uh, Sean, can I flip the, flip the topic on? Yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. So there's two sides of the story, right? So there's Josh, who's edgy blocks and Anaconda. Awesome. But for me and the, and probably for a lot of educators and Sean, just the inspiration side of your story. Um, we have an, another cousin team in, in London that we interviewed their story as the same. It's, it's like an inspiration for a lot of kids and a lot of kids think, you know, I'm 15 years old. What, what am I going to do? Or, you know, what difference am I going to make? And here you are four years down the road, skipping, skipping uni, you know, for something, no offense, better than, you know, what could you provide for the kids? Just, just give some, here's your choice chance to be inspirational. Give your chance to tell the kids around the world, how can they do what you do? Well, I think it's important to kind of just say that if you have an idea and you really go for it, then you can, you can do it. Um, you know, it's when I, you know, I said earlier that Edgebox was a Saturday afternoon project after I kind of learned the basics of how to code. Um, and, you know, I never sort of imagined that I would be doing this, what I am now. So if you have an idea, just go for it um, because you'll never know if you don't. Um, and I think that age does come into it of like, oh, well, I'm 15, so I can't really do it because that's something that an adult needs to do. Um, but it's all about making the right connections and really just pushing what you're doing and going for it. Um, and I think that's really important to, to just yeah go for whatever idea that you've got. Um, and that way it will succeed um, because there's no one, there's no one stopping, stopping you doing it. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. I was going to ask, um, you know, cause I think a lot of people give up when it gets hard, right? Like they go find something else to do or something that they know they can accomplish, but when it gets hard and sometimes it, it feels impossible, the, you know, the hardest thing to do in response is to keep going. Right. So in your journey with Anaconda and edgy blocks and like all of these different steps along the way, like were there times when it got really hard and you didn't know how you were going to solve the problem or what was going to happen next and kind of how did you get past that or how did you get through it to the other side? Yeah, um, there's a lot of times. Um, I think I can recall back to the last year where it was sort of like, Edgebox had become this thing where it was, I don't want to say unmaintainable, but it took up a lot of my time. Um, and yeah, it was kind of like, do I really want to, I've been doing this for seven years. Do I really want to keep on doing it? And what kept me going was, um, like I've just, I just said, you know, I talked to teachers a lot who use it and hearing the impact that it has on the students and students wanting to, go further in there, um, you know, maybe pursuing software development as a career like I have. Um, I think that's what really kept me going in those times of like, oh, this is too difficult. Um, you know, I don't really want to work on this anymore. Um, it, it was really kind of like hearing the, the impact that it's had um, because I never imagined the impact that it's had now. Um, you know, there's, it, I'm probably safe in saying there's been millions of students who have used as your box and for me that's a, a huge thing to have reached that many people so you know i just think about that when when things get difficult and they will get difficult you know if you want to pursue an idea and you want it to succeed it's not going to be an easy journey um you know i definitely thought that at the start of that you know i'll just do this thing for a weekend and see how it goes um but if you actually want to make something of it the journey is difficult uh, but i would say you know, the end result is definitely worth it. Um, you just got to persevere and um, see it through. And so I just always think of the impact that it has. Um, and I think that's applicable to a lot of projects people work on in this space, you know, inspiring the next generation of coders because I was eight years old once learning to code. Um, and now eight year olds are using my thing and I'm trying to inspire that next generation. So that's definitely what I always think of to keep me going. I think the other thing that 
that holds people back to is the the thought that what they create won't be good enough, right? Or and by extension that they're not good enough to do this. And I think now that you've been doing this for seven years, you can look back on it and see the early work that you did and see those early versions. And I'm sure that you are probably more critical than anybody else about those early versions of edgy blocks. Um, how do you feel about the code that you wrote back then? Is it something that you're proud of? Is it something that makes you cringe? Like how do, how do you look at that and, and, you know, compare that to what you're doing today or do you even compare it at all is there a way to help people understand that like getting something out there is the most important thing not necessarily how good it is yeah um i, th I think i i mean it's definitely not code i would write today um but uh, but it's uh, but it's not either it's not even applicable to the application it is now i guess it's like it's been through agebox has been the a product but it's been through so many iterations and it's not been the same thing throughout its whole entire life um so yeah i i definitely think that getting something out there is the most important um because it took a while for edge to get traction um you know the education space is definitely difficult to kind of break into i would say um and to get adoption isn't an overnight thing um so you really just have to kind of fail see what works and learn from those mistakes. And like I've said a lot of times, speak to speak to the people who use it. Um, because that's how you will find out what works. Um but I, I think that now um you know I, I definitely probably don't look back on the stuff that I've I've done all those years ago. Um but I definitely remember the things that haven't worked. And I know that if I'm developing something new you know, I remember all those things that I've done that didn't didn't necessarily work. Um, so yeah, just kind of keep putting stuff out there and see what see what works, and then you will eventually find what what you need to do. Like you know, Edge Blocks, what it was seven years ago isn't what it is now, and there's a reason behind that because I've learned what people want. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a journey in that in those seven years to to get to where it is now. But I think that I think definitely over the past year or two it's really found it's what what it is it's found its identity it's found what it's trying to aim for and that makes feature development a lot easier and um, because i sort of know where i need to go with it where that was pretty unclear in the first few years so it's funny i'm sitting in here writing my mental list and it's all these um you know, the educational bling words that we we talk about a lot about developing learners that can have grit and perseverance that can understand that um, feedback and iteration on a project is actually necessary. And, and you know, it things are not going to look pretty and it, and things are going to fail and things are going to be hard and having a dream and creative ideas are important. Um, anything else I missed? I mean, this is like this is like a teacher's dream, right? Right now, yep. We he, they taught you perseverance. Check, check, check. Any other skills? So a lot of educators out there listen. You know, we're designing curriculum for the AI learners. Any other things? Because this is your opportunity to tell all the educators what do the students actually need. I know, yes, okay, math, English, whatever, whatever. Um, but what do they actually need to develop as as kids in order to be in the place where where you are? Because you kind of did the fast track. You you got those skills really. You you know your mentors, your parents, your family really helped you build those skills. And you know what other skills? put you on the spot so many times sorry Todd. you're just so smart you um, can handle it i know <laughs> it's trying to think I, well i think i think we've had, yeah i think i mentioned quite a lot um and i think the the thing that like i have really found useful i might be dodging the question here but that was not my intention um the thing that i've really found useful is making those connections within the python community um and i think if you really want to get into this space there's so many people you can learn from I think that's the biggest thing that I've kind of taken away from my whole journey of that I don't know everything um, and that's not something I'm ashamed of 
uh, and every day is a school day, even though I'm not in school anymore. Um, and learning from people within the community. And I think that's what is really special about Python as a programming language um, is that it's very much this community thing. It, everyone's not isolated. Everyone's trying to help each other out. You, know, you go to a, a, a PyCon and all the people that you meet there, sharing knowledge, um, trying to learn from each other. So that's always something that I, you know, kind of say that is very important and something that I use now of that if you have an opportunity to learn something from someone, then take the opportunity and learn it. Um, I think that is probably the most important skill to build those connections and learn from people. I love that. It's beautiful. <laughs> I have, I have a follow-up question uh, to that. Um, especially as you've, you know, kind of made the transition from being in school to being in the apprenticeship and now as a, as a software developer, are there specific skills or habits or traits that you've picked up from being a software developer that you found particularly useful in other parts of your life, whether it's other school subjects or, you know, learning how to bake or cook or whatever it is, but just something that um, some of those traits and skills that have been valuable in other areas of your life? I think um, before I kind of made the transition to being a full-time software developer, I was possibly quite isolated in that, you know, I never really worked on a team before. So I never really realized the value of teamwork and what that can bring. Um, and yeah, I was probably, I, I very much liked doing the things on my own before. Um, but now I'm the complete opposite. I'd rather be working with someone on a project. Um to bounce ideas off them um, and just get someone else's input. Like, you know, I can think um, something at work might be a good idea if I'm, you know, working on a new feature, but then someone could question, bring up a question that I necessarily hadn't thought of myself when thinking of that idea. Um, and that teamwork kind of philosophy is very applicable to, to other areas of life as well. Um, so yeah, definitely teamwork is something that I just never really um sort of had experience with before uh, but now you know i work with a team every day uh so it's a skill that i you know really um use a lot so yeah that's definitely what i picked up you know during that transition of being a student to working full-time as a software developer nice yeah i'm thinking about all those failed projects that teachers assign <laughs> But it is, it is, it is important. Teamwork, communication, community. It's like a thing, three C's, creativity, communication, and critical thinking. Check, check, check. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else we need to know about EduBlocks, Anaconda? You're going to start putting in the Anaconda notebook into EduBlocks too, kind of drag and drop? <laughs> wow. I, I think, I think. <laughs> that I, would I think, be awesome. I think, that is, I, I think that's quite important of the, um, you know, I think we're very aware and I'm very aware that people aren't going to use EduBox forever. So like providing a way to transition people over to something like a Jupyter Notebook or that, you know, VS Code or text-based programming environment, um, I think it's something that I'm very aware of and EduBox doesn't necessarily do right now. It's sort of like, here's your block-based environment and then have fun and find something after you've you know, graduated as such. So yeah, graduating into a a proper coding environment as such is something that um yeah, I think I'm very aware of, but I don't really know what that looks like yet. Um but yeah, it's it is a consideration. But in terms of like other things to mention, um I, I think I've kind of touched on it a, a lot of times over the past forty five minutes, but you know, Edgebox again is a a, a user driven project. Um try it out, uh, give feedback, um, and help us improve it. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's a really exciting time to, to be kind of using it and be part of the, the kind of EduBox community. So uh, come and join us because there's a lot of things coming, um, like PyScript um, that I kind of touched on very briefly. Uh, being able to run full Python in the browser and publish web apps using Python um, you know, it's an open source project, which some of my Anaconda co-workers work on. Um, and that's something that, that, that I mentioned, the, the big feature that I'm working on next, that's what that is. Um, 
So yeah, that's a really exciting thing because you know I'm going to be able to include so many more Python libraries um, like Matplotlib and all those sort of really cool popular things. Um, so that's going to open up a lot of doors. And also kind of just some of the things that PyScript sort of enables of being able to interact with HTML elements, um, build graphical user interfaces really quickly. Uh, I think that's going to provide a lot more fun and engaging stuff, uh, which is the sort of whole philosophy of Flange Code for Azure Blocks. So yeah, lots of exciting things coming up and um, please reach out with any feedback that anyone has. I'm uh, very much open to that. Very cool. I see a lot of good projects coming around this August uh, for some computer science classrooms. And I'm definitely going to be hitting up the lower school teachers to to skip all that JavaScript stuff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the cat meowing. No offense, Scratch. <laughs> but that's just super cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see what the future brings. It's great to have the resources of Anaconda behind it now. Um, and what a great partnership, really, to have Anaconda stepped in, step into this space. Um, they've done a lot of great things for the Python community. So to um, to have their support um, and and sponsorship of Edgy Blocks going forward is really going to uh, open up a lot of doors for us. I'm excited to see what that will bring. So okay. um, I think we're just about out of time. So I want to say thank you, Josh, for joining us again. It's been fabulous catching up with you. Just really enjoyable to talk with you about everything that's going on. Um, I know in the last four years, seeing the progress that EduBlox has made um, is amazing and remarkable. And to be able to know that you're making progress as well as a developer and, and being able to build your career has been really gratifying to see as well. So thank you for coming on the show and joining us uh, and catching up with us. Um, it's been a lot of fun to, to chat and we can't wait to see what's next. No, thanks, Homie. And it'll be interesting to this in another four years and see where it's at. Because um, if you'd kind of made me make a list four years ago of um, what it would look like now, I probably would have got everything wrong. So um, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, um, look forward to, to what's to come. Excellent. Awesome. Well, if you want to try out EduBlox for yourself, you can go to eduBlox.org. It's not just for kids. Adults can enjoy it just as well. Uh, so make sure that you uh, go check it out. There's the curriculum there. There's the ability to code, save projects. Um, it's really pretty amazing. And you can keep track of all the things that are happening with EduBlox through that uh, space. Uh, for teaching Python, if you want to connect with us, you can connect with us on Twitter which is now known as X. I'm very confused. Um, and on that note, I, I don't know if I'm getting into my old age and yelling from my porch, but I feel like social media has gotten weird. So my ask to you, our listeners, is to share this with someone else. Share our podcast with another person, whether it's in chat or side by side on the couch, but share the podcast with someone you think would appreciate it and enjoy it and needs to learn a little bit about how uh, computer science education could really work. So share it with someone else. And if you also have the opportunity to share a review of our podcast from the listeners, as Josh said, the people who are, are using our podcast, please share us some feedback on uh, your podcast listener of choice, whether that's iTunes or Spotify or any of the other podcast players that are out there. We'd love to hear from you and love to hear what you're getting out of the podcast. Um, you can also send us direct feedback through our website at teachingpython.fm. Um, and again, uh, we also have a Patreon page for anyone who would like to financially support the show. It definitely helps keep things uh, running, keeps the lights on. Um, and we appreciate all of your support from our, our ongoing Patreon supporters. Um, Kelly, is there anybody else I forgot to thank? I, I think I need to thank the Academy or something. Thank the Academy. Of, yeah. No, I, I, I do think, I do recommend sharing for me as um, getting ready for this August come around and going back to school in two weeks, this little motivation of talking to you, Josh, I was looking forward to it since I contacted you like two months ago. And I was like, Josh is coming on the show. Josh is coming on the show. And John, John was like, yeah, happy dance, Kelly. <laughs> but you, it's you and, and, and young adults like, like you and others who kind of keep us going. Um, it takes one, one inspirational learner and student to, to really give a little boost. And, and if you're a teacher and you know someone that, or you know somebody who teaches computer science, share it to them this episode. And yeah, just kind of makes you feel good that 
we still have kids that love learning. Young adults, sorry, not kids. I'm just getting old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, um, once again, thank you, Josh, for coming on the show. And definitely let's not make it four years before we reconnect. We'll be watching with great interest all the things that you're doing at Edgy Blocks and with Anaconda. Um, thank you, Josh. Kelly, um, it's been a pleasure as always. <laughs> so I'm going to sign it off here. For Teaching Python, this is Sean. And this is Kelly signing off.